So once I have a tessellation that I like, um, what this will do is create a mesh. And the mesh is defined by a series of vertices and faces. Here you can see that uh, there's 121 vertices and 100 faces. But in this state, uh, I can't really have access to this geometry, right? If I bake this into my rhino scene, um, I have it here, but um, I can't really get access into those individual faces. All right, so to do that, I'm going to basically um, deconstruct this mesh, and then from the data I get from that deconstruction, I'm going to recreate each mesh face as a single standalone uh, surface that I could bake into Rhino or continue to work with uh, within Grasshopper. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is in the mesh components, uh, there's a component called deconstruct mesh. So I'm going to create one of those, pass the mesh into that. And out of that, I'm going to have a basic list of all the vertices, a list of uh, all the faces, a list of colors if I have color information in my mesh, uh, and the normals of each vertex of the mesh. Okay, and what I want to do here is basically use this information to recreate um, uh, the mesh faces while paying attention to how this data is organized in the outputs. Okay, so the first thing I'll notice is uh, with faces, uh, I get this information, and these numbers actually correspond to the indices of uh, the vertices that define each face. This is the kind of information I can use to recreate uh, my surfaces from those points. Um, there's a one more step that's necessary. Right now, this face representation, the data, isn't really useful to us. It's not in the, uh, presented in a way that we can get access to it. So the um, next thing we need to do is basically go to this deconstruct face component, and we'll just plug in the faces into that. And this component will actually take each of these uh, 100 faces and give us the four points that define that face. But you can see that the points aren't being output as points. So there's not like three X, Y, Z components. Uh, there's just numbers. And these numbers, again, relate to the index, actually, in this list of vertices where each vertex uh, is located. So what we can do now is actually go through this list of vertex data and pull out the right points according to these uh, indices. And we can do that with the list uh, item component and create one of these and list item will let you pull out uh, certain uh, values within a list by specifying its index or its position in the list so if we treat all of our vertices as the list again these are giving us the index locations of the points we want in that list so we can just plug in a here so this will give us a list of 100 uh, points and each of these points are the first point in each of the hundred faces of the mesh. So now to get all four points for each of the mesh faces, we can just duplicate this list item. And then the list is always going to be our list of vertices. And the only thing we want to change is which of these uh, outputs we're plugging into. So we'll just go through and create a list item component for each one. So what's going on now is that this node contains um, the first point from each face, the second, third, and fourth point. All right, so once we have all the information, you see that each list contains 100 points. And now we just want to recreate those faces as surfaces by referencing all these points in order. Uh, for that, we can go to Surface tab and this four-point surface node. And conveniently enough, uh, the surface from four points node will let us plug in uh, four points, and from that point, it's going to make a surface. All right, so what we can do now is basically plug each of these components one at a time. And what it's done is it's basically recreated that entire mesh um, as separate surfaces defined by those same points. Okay, so here I have 100 untrimmed surfaces. Um, okay, so at this point, uh, everything's still kind of organized um, and parametric. We can change the resolution of our mesh and this will update with it. So now you see we have 16 surfaces and all the uh, point logic and everything stayed the same. And we can adjust our original surface. We want a different shape and all of that will update at the same time. 
And now, because these are separate surfaces, if we bake them uh, into Rhino, you see we have the individual face geometry, and now we can work with it in different ways. Um, one thing we might want to do is start to scale all these surfaces. So we can use a scale component, and we'll plug in our panels here. By default, they're all going to scale one value um, around the origin. Uh, we want to scale them all around their local center. Uh, a quick shortcut to get the center of any geometry is the area node. If you plug in a surface into the area node, it's going to give you the area, but it's also giving you the center. We'll just plug in those centers in here. And then for our factor, we can just create mm -hmm. a slider and now get control over the geometry. So again, all these things are possible because of this kind of manipulation of um, going from a surface, converting that into a mesh with multiple faces, and then going back and converting each of those mesh faces into a separate surface. And all this is possible because of the way that Grasshopper allows us to actually handle data very, uh, very precisely. All right, so that's a uh, kind of basic introduction to working with data and uh, specifically working with the tree representation of data uh, in Grasshopper.